Now, cosmetic surgery is big business. I mean, I should know it costs me enough. <laughs> yeah, you'd be sat this one. Um, and despite the recession as well, it's a growing one. But is the most extreme way to delay the ageing process the best? I'm not sure. Joining me now to discuss some of the options, Harley Street surgeon Dr Dirk Kramer and the beauty journalist Anna Richardson. <laughs> Dr. Kramer, it's, it is a growth industry by the sound of it. True, true. Uh, well, I'll just put it difficult to say percentages, but do you notice more and more people, and is it women in particular, wanting to do something about their body? It's definitely a growing industry. I don't really like the word so much, but we talk about cosmetic surgery industry. It is growing and growing and growing. It's women, but also more and more men, I have to tell you. Right. Still a smaller part percentage, but women are, and men both. going up both. Yes. And it's beauty, the old thing, it's in the eye of the beholder. So many of us seem so dissatisfied with our appearance. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> the only way I can look from here. I can't look in. But, I mean, we all have our, you know, big nose, baggy eyes, all this thing. It, it's, it's very true. You know, women in particular are, are constantly dissatisfied with their mm. appearance. And I think that there, there's an interesting trend at the moment uh, with women seeking out non-invasive, uh, non-cosmetic procedures. So, needles, basically, rather than the knife, which is what Dirk does. So, a needle is classed as non-invasive, like a cream. Then, then. It hurts a little bit more than a cream, I have to say. I can attest to that. But, uh, yes, effectively, so needles are considered non-invasive. see, a lot of people, Dr Kramer, are terrified. And I think with good cause of going under the knife, there's been so much information lately about exploding breast implants, problems after surgery with internal bleeding, all kinds of things. I mean, I, I would be terrified at the prospect. What can you say to people, as an expert in this field, that they should be looking for if they're contemplating it? I think most important is that uh, the treatment they're undergoing should be performed by a highly qualified and trained physician. Well, That's... people would expect everybody who purported to be able to do cosmetic surgery to be qualified. Is that not the case? It's, it's not the case. For example, lots of GP general practitioners, um, they offer liposuction. It sounds like an easy procedure, but it's not. It can liposuction have just sucking exactly, the fat sucking out. Exactly, sucking the fat out. It's a very popular, most popular procedure here in the UK, and more and more people offering that. But um, the training of these people are like a weekend class. They, they learn how to move back and forth the cannula, but it doesn't mean they really know how to handle tissue and they can uh, produce major risk and can end in a disaster. So people should be really wary, Anna, than your experience. Yeah, yeah I, I think that uh, we've learned from the PIP scandal, the, the breast implant scandal of last year, and the government are proposing tighter regulations of the industry. Women, I think, have now learned from that, that we're realising we're putting ourselves up voluntarily for, you know, mm. quite shocking uh, procedures, really, quite, quite shocking operations, uh, which is why we've suddenly got this sort of growth interest in non-invasive procedures, which are cost-effective, and efficient. Right, basically. well, still to come, do you want to wave goodbye to your wobbly bits? Dr. Kramer will be here helping to uh, sort them out and offering live consultations after this short break. And Ronan Keating will be performing. We'll see you in a mo. <laughs> Welcome back. In just a minute, Ronan Keating with a performance of Wasted Light from his latest album, Fires. But first, we're in the clinic with plastic surgeon Dr Dirk and broadcaster and journalist Anna Richardson, who's herself an occasional consumer of beauty therapy services. They'll be dealing with the most common questions posed by us when it comes to improving our looks. And the viewer who wants a new look, one viewer, is Wendy. Hi, my name's Wendy, I'm 67 and I'm concerned about the lines around the side of my mouth down here because unless I'm actually smiling, um, I look quite miserable and I'd quite like some advice on, as to know how to get rid of them. Common problem, Dr Dirk, these lines that make us look miserable when we're in repose? Very common problem, especially in her age group. She's 67, between 60 and 70. It's not just women, it's also men and I'm promising you I'll get it two, one day. Um, the only thing we can do, the quick fix would be uh, fill up this indentation, it's called the marionette lines, with a dermal filler. So this is an injection job which fills it exactly. up? Exactly, it's under local anesthesia, not even, it's just a cream, a local right. anesthetic cream you put on for a few minutes and then you inject a filler which kind of pumps this indentation up. Uh, it's kind of an airbrush effect. 
You've got a, a load of potions to your side there, Anna. I mean, a lot of people just, you know, a bit of cream here and a bit there, and you know, rather than doing anything more invasive than that, do creams work? Well, it depends what you're talking about, to be honest, Alan. I mean, what, one cream that does work is a silicon-based beauty product that you can buy on the high street. It's used a lot on film sets in America. You put it underneath your foundation, and effectively, it's like polyfiller. But it will it fill really the light. Does it really hurt? Doesn't it doesn't hurt. It won't do that. Okay. One thing I've done, because I, I'm slightly cautious about creams, I had something called a 10-minute facelift done just before Christmas. I'm nearly as old as you, and I had a look. <laughs> <laughs> you look a lot better. <laughs> 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 uh, I had uh, effectively injectables um, put around my cheekbones and along my jawline, and it lifts the face uh, quite subtly. You, you don't really well. have a wrinkle on you, but the other thing a lot of people worry about when they start going with the face is that you'd suddenly get lopsided, Dr. Doug. Or you, you do your eyes and you end up looking a bit oriental. And it does happen. It does happen because very often practic practitioners um, take the wrong indication to f mm. put fillers in the face. At, to a certain amount, fillers are great, but if you do too, too, too much yeah. in it, then you get the so-called pillow face. The cheeks oh are God, full of filler, yeah. and then they press So, to have it eyes. done properly for Wendy, how much would it cost her? Well, probably she gets away with one milliliter of this dermal yeah. filler, and it costs her like 350 pounds. So, and how long would it last? It lasts about six, eight months, um, probably 12, mm. but at 12 months it's not mm. anymore like it was so at the beginning. So it's going to be about 500 quid a year if you want to go for exactly. that option. Yes. Then. Well, we have in the studio someone with their own questions about improving her looks. Will you please welcome Angela? There you are. Stand there. Now, Angela, your problem is what? Uh, my problem is my uh, stomach. Um, I exercise all the time, but this is what I've been left with. This is what they call a mummy tummy, I yes, think. Yes, they call it the mummy tummy. It's very wobbly. It has a life of its own. has conversations without being asked. I don't like it. <laughs> and um, I would like to see less of it, because I feel that that's... All my emotions go there, and I want to get rid of it. I want to know what options there are, because lots of women exercise and they take good care of themselves but there's this area you know this cause for concern area look it looks like a soft walnut oh and it's not very attractive Dr. Dirk, what can you actually it's a pity because you did quite hard work working out probably over a month or a year dieting everything and you're left alone in the end with a result you're not happy with no i'm not happy well, it's not I have to, you don't have to do the surgery but if you don't feel comfortable with you have to undergo a so-called tummy tuck or we call it abdominoplasty. Yes, I've and it's heard a of two it. and a half hour surgery under general anesthesia mm. where we can excise all this extra skin that you hear, the so called wobbly skin. So, yeah. can I just ask you, you, you make a cut, you take a lump Feel out, and join it together? No, 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 no. basically, Alan. what we do, no, 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 no. <laughs> we're going to cut very, very low from hip bone to hip bone, a very low incision yes. that will be uh, hidden under the bikini line later. Yeah. And then I undermine from here all the skin up to the lower rib cage. Yeah. I pull this all up and then I pull it down. Do you down. want to pull it just so exactly. that you actually exist? I pull everything down out. <laughs> and the overlapping skin. You, and when you walk out afterwards, you will be walking like that. But <laughs> no, presumably it's all right when it's. Exactly. No, the, the first day after surgery, they think they kind of yeah. tech, um, but it will. And this is something that no easy. cream is going to help that, is it? No cream, but you could try something that's not quite as dramatic as that, which um, what is. Would that be? It's a radio frequency treatment called thermage, which effectively heats the collagen and sort of it, it tightens the skin. It's been proven to work quite well on the body, not so well on the face, but mm. I think that could work. Well, well, you've got an option there. Um, in coming weeks, we're going to be looking at other <laughs> problem areas such as noses, necks, and bosoms. If you'd like, yes, don't get excited, gentlemen. You've been a block booking for the front row. It'll be <laughs> like beach volleyball in here. If you'd like to appear on the show and have a live consultation, we're very serious about it, with Dr Dirk and Anna, then please email the show alan at itv.com or register your interest on the Alan Titchmarsh Show Facebook page. And do remember, if you're considering surgery, go to a very reliable and qualified practitioner. A lot of people worry about it. We don't want you to get into bother. My thanks to Dr Dirk, Anna Richardson, and for Angela being brave enough to show us her problem. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. In just a minute, you'll be looking at the best of your snowy photos, but first with a performance of Wasted Light from his latest album, Fires, and he's now out there on tour. Please welcome Ronan Keating. <laughs> <laughs>